Good morning. It is Monday. I got my neuro coffee in hand, so I'm feeling pretty good. Um, it is perfect as usual. So I had a question that came in um, through the Q&A that I wanted to address because I get a lot of questions about models and and how I put together what I do and and uh, there's a lot of confusion and, and people get misled as to what's important. Um, there's a lot of people that are talking about some of the things um, that, that, that I talk about that, that are either incomplete or they don't have the foundational information. And so I wanted to make sure that I, I, I threw out some resources to you um, because, it, again, th this question is sort of reflective of, of, of what I've been getting. And this comes from Paul. And he says, what I've gathered is it seems that an individual's ISA can be a good signpost to start to consider the appropriate exercises, drills, etc. If I'm misunderstanding that, I'd happily take some clarification. And so the ISA is interesting. Um, it, it's it's sexy. Um, I I will I will you know break my arm patting myself on the back. I, I don't know um, how many people were, were really looking at it as a significant influence um, before I started talking about it a lot. But it's not new. I didn't create anything. Um, and, and uh, a lot of people have been talking about it. It's just I, I just don't think it's been in in the uh, the the uh, common discussion, if you will. But um, I pulled a book off the shelf, and this is from this is uh, Joel Goldthwait's Body Mechanics book um, from 1952. And if you look at the little picture there, you got a narrow, you got a wide. So again, nothing new, nothing uh, um, n novel about it. Um, they've always looked at, at structure as an influence of movement and health. And, and so, again, the ISA is just a piece of the puzzle. It might provide you an element of understanding in regard to a compensatory strategy that someone may be using. It might provide you an element of influence as to what their movement capabilities will be, what their performance capabilities will be. But it's only a piece of the puzzle. And so I pulled a bunch of resources off the shelf to give you an idea as to, to some of the resources that would be foundational just to understanding movement in general that may be helpful. And then I've got a list of, of some resources as well um, that, that you can access either on my YouTube channel, which you should sub subscribe to because there's a lot of good stuff on there. And then some other, other video stuff that, that you can access on the, the internet. Um, Breathing is kind of a big deal. Um, you do it all the time. When you stop breathing, bad things tend to happen. And so it is always an influence. And so you will always try to find a way to breathe um, under every circumstance. And, and so that might be one of the reasons why some folks have uh, the movement capabilities that they do. And so we always need to understand those influences. So so uh, this is Chai Tao's breathing book. I suggest you get it. Um, this is very, very broad scope um, from the biochemistry to the mechanics. They actually talk about an ISA in here, but somebody like slapped their name onto the angle because they wanted to take ownership of it. And they're wrong in regard to what the actual measurement is. So keep that in mind. Um, but it's in there. And so again, still a useful book. Um, and I would suggest that you get that. The simplest breathing book and probably the most useful is is this. This is the anatomy of breathing. I, I would I would probably get that before even the Chai Tao book. I would read this because it's very simple um, and and actually very useful. You'll see a lot of positions in in this book that um, will help you influence and make changes in people's ability to move and breathe. So so again, very 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 useful. Um, let me get the Joel's book out of the way there. All right. Um, the mechanics of the thorax, the way the ribs move, um, the way the spine moves uh, are always influential and, and they are influenced by breathing. And so um, probably my favorite book that, that reviews these mechanics is Diane Lee's Thorax book. I really like the first half of this book a lot. Um, and note, I said the first half. Um, I, I don't think that, that she and I would necessarily agree on treatment, but I think she's brilliant in regards to putting together the, the mechanical component. There's also some papers um, online that are accessible that, that outline this as well. So I suggest you get her book and, and, and kudos to her for putting that together. Um, her pelvis book is, is very, very useful as well. So again, get those two. Um, 
This is an oldie but a goodie. This is Grakovetsky's Gre uh, Spinal Engine. Very useful. Um, it's going to cover everything from spinal mechanics, pelvic mechanics, uh, intra-abdominal pressures, and things like that. So um, if you can find it, I believe that my copy here is 1988. Um, but it's a, it's a tough find. But if you can get it, I suggest you do. It's very, very useful. Um, as far as extremity relationships, pelvic mechanics... Um, and, and such influences. Um, this is uh, Schomburger's The Malalignment Syndrome. Um, very useful um, in identifying a lot, of, a lot of concepts in regards to those peripheral relationships, but needs to be read critically uh, because of the way that he measures things. But as far as looking at the extremity relationships and the most common relationships, this is a very useful book. Um, so, so get that. Um, Trigger points and muscle chains and osteopathy. So this this will be a really good. There, there's a small section here that's very useful in regard to uh, how the the body moves um, as you breathe. So the, and, and it's the whole body as you breathe. So that again, very very useful. Um, the imaginary muscle chains and things like that. I'm not too keen on. Um, so uh, again, read critically. Still very useful. Um, again, I, I like the first half of the book, the second half of the book, not very useful for me. Um, this is a, a book, this is a neuromuscular uh, function, so they use the F word, so I don't really appreciate that too much. But, but again, uh, still a, a useful book in regard to some of the, the respiration, circulatory issues, um, looking at some of the mechanics of, of, of breathing and an, and an influence on movement. So again, still a useful book. Um, this is uh, movement stability in, in lumbo pelvic pain. So this is yeah, this is um, Bleeming Mooney and Stockhart. And the the original, uh, the first edition of this uh, movement stability in low back pain, I believe it's over there on the shelf. That the the first edition is still still really good too because it had some some Don Tigney stuff in there, which is which is interesting. Um, but this is a nice little upgrade as far as understanding a, a lot of the, the relationship mechanics of, of the thorax, the spine, and the pelvis. So again, very useful. Um, I think you need to know a little bit of physics. And so that's a little bit scary for, for people. But I, I kind of take the, the Faraday approach. So, so uh, Faraday didn't have any formal education. And so what he did is he took the physics um, and, and didn't worry about the math. He understood the concepts. So... So I like the cartoon guide of physics says as a lead in, it's very easy, it's cartoony and easy to understand. So again, nice little book there. Um, get something that that we'll we'll talk to you about about um, about fascia. And this it's not that the fascia is anything spectacular or special or needs to be separated out. It's just the fact that this is going to help you look at some of these relationships as to how things work together and how all of your stuff that you're made out of is all the same stuff and it all behaves very, very similarly. So I think that any decent, decent fascial resource is going to be useful. I think um, anatomy trains might be helpful. I think there's a chapter in there that's probably worth reading. Um, but, but again, just get something and, and Schleip is very, very well known, um, as far as, uh, doing the, the, the research on, on, on such things. So that's useful. This might be one of the prettiest books I've ever seen. Um, and I can't even pronounce this guy's name. He's, he's French. I think it's, uh, Guam Berteau, and he's got a video on YouTube. That's also, uh, exceptional, but this is like a pretty, pretty book. This has some great pictures. And then... Um, finally, what I would say is that you probably need to understand a little bit about where you came from. And so this is uh, um, uh, embryology. This is Lar Larson's. Yeah, this is Larson's embryology book, um, which I like a lot um, as far as a resource. Gray's Anatomy actually has some outstanding elements of, of embryology in it, too. So those are some resources that I think you should probably access. Um, in addition, like I said, subscribe to my YouTube page because there'll be explanations on things like ISAs and hip movement and things like that and those relationship. And then um, IFASTU also has the mechanics of respiration in there um, as an explanation. So hopefully that's useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, please post them. And uh, I'll be back later this week with more stuff. Have a great day.